almost instantaneously when people meet him, they think of a man of integrity. I think of uh, energy when I think of Jerry Orr. A quality person. If I had to think of one word, I'd say enthusiasm. Loves to compete. BC hockey. Class. A person of character. I really just think about how genuine he is. People will ask me, is he really that, that nice a guy? He is. Jerry and I grew up in a family of 10. I was the youngest, Jerry was number eight in line. He's three years my senior. Um, growing up in a big family, I think, taught us a lot about how to fight for the last potato, uh, how to play as a team. Uh, every day was enjoyable. There's a whole section right behind the BC bench that if you just go 20 rows up, it's all Yorks. His uh, game at first was he was a terrific hard player, good goal scorer. Skating could have improved, and uh, as he got to the higher level, it, it got better every, every day. He said, Fred, come over to the house. I said, sure, go over the house. And what did we do? Shot pucks at the door, his garage door. Just shot pucks one after another. I go home, my hands are red, you know, just to make ourselves better players. Jerry York was one heck of a college hockey player. His teams won 60 games, which is probably the high level of anybody in that era. His senior year was All-American. Walter Brown uh, award winner. Just about carried the varsity team that year to the NCAA Finals at Brown. I think about my father, um, you know, he's an extremely loving dad. Um, he was always there for my sister and I, Laura. I'm sure she would say the same thing. We appreciate, and he talks about how one of the reasons he never, you know, went to the NHL is he always wanted to be around his family. My father, when I think of him, the first thing I think about is his positive energy. Throughout my entire life um, as a parent, whenever I had a disappointment or a setback, he was always there being very supportive and really putting things into perspective. He also has this 24-hour rule that he applies to hockey as well as life. And if anything bad happens or if anything good happens, you have 24 hours to feel that emotion and then it's time to move on. He had those leadership qualities. I mean, he was obviously elected by his teammates as the captain of the team, but uh, he also uh, displayed those leadership uh, actions on the ice as well as off the ice. Yeah, I think we can move pucks more, all right? Coming up ice, they really start getting pucks going. Stick to tape, tape to tape, and we'll get some dumps and we're all moving, all right? Everybody looks up to Jerry, whether it be the athletic director, the custodian, the Zamboni drivers, and Jerry treats them all the same. He's very much like the students themselves. I mean, he has the enthusiasm, the spontaneity uh, of a young person. He sees the enjoyable, good side of life, really, and, and enjoys it. I think for players, it, they have, there's such a reverence and respect for him. But Jerry, on another level, he's, he's kind of quirky and funny. He connects with those students. They think about something he says, and three, three to five seconds later, they're laughing. Because they say, oh, that was funny. Because Jerry can be funny. So, all right, that's the whole objective here of the game is to score goals. But you've got to shoot it by the goal depth. I think coaching was always in his blood. So he went up to Claxon as the assistant with Lenny for, for uh, seven years. And then when Coach and Lenny came to Boston College, he became coach there. I think as a life lesson, one of the things I learned from Coach York was always striving to improve. I mean, it, that was an emphasis with him during my four years at Clarkson, always trying to improve as a player and as a team. I think that's one of his greatest strengths is, is his, his ability to recruit good players. And I think the types of players that he looks for, there's a certain attribute that he wants, and he wants to have high character guys who are very coachable. The one thing that I took out of playing for him for four years was just the positive energy that he has, um, the positive spin that he can put on a lot of different situations, uh, the positives that he takes out of negative situations and kind of keeps our team uh, with a positive attitude around the locker room. That just creates the culture that he wants. Jerry doesn't have an ego. and. I think if you're going to ask your kids not to have an ego and check your ego at the door, you have to act the same way. And if you've seen any of the, all the hype that's going on with him being the all-time winningest coach, he deflects every single bit of it. Uh, he, he doesn't want to talk about it at all. He just wants to talk about getting the next win. It's an unbelievable institution. You guys know that. You, you realize the spirit that we have on campus and uh, nationwide about Boston College. It's uh, 
remarkable institution. Uh, having said that, this will be the last time we talk about personal goals here. Uh, but the two points I think is really important for When we bring our recruits on campus, they certainly get a feel for his selflessness and how much that he is recruiting for the program and how much the kids are putting, our kids are putting the program in front of themselves. And a lot of kids aren't used to that. Like, they've been told um, everywhere they go how special they are and how much they can do for the program. And Jerry has that feeling that, you well, know, let's you're gonna come here and check your ego at the door and you're gonna be a part of something much bigger than yourself. He's a great teacher. His, his background is in education. Um, he loves teaching. It's the only coach I've ever seen who draws the students uh, into the uh, assessment of the game. He just goes around the room and hits maybe four or five people. Tommy, what did you see? Well, what do we get for us? Tommy, you want to start? <coughs> I think he gets guys to be accountable by preaching team first. And, you know, you're one of 25 guys and, and you have to do your part uh, to help the team win. And, um, you know, he always said, you know, when you go on the ice, you got the keys to BC hockey. It's like a car. You're driving the car and, uh, you know, having that um, responsibility and, and taking ownership of your responsibility um, kind of preaches what he's all about. It's not that I've never seen Jerry get mad. Jerry gets mad when somebody's not going to class. Jerry gets mad because somebody takes a stupid, bad penalty or if they uh, disrespect the game or they disrespect a custodian. Uh, he wants everyone to treat everyone the same. Jerry's favorite phrase he likes, likes to use with the team is uh, the act of chasing trophies. I think when the calendar turns to February and, and the bean pot starts approaching and soon after that uh, the league playoffs and the national playoffs, he really gets excited. Uh, and he says it's trophy season. Every national championship that he has won has a different meaning for him and he's happy in a different way. I think winning at Bowling Green in quadruple overtime, it, it was just amazing. And at a school like Bowling Green, where you don't have all the resources, he really had to find these players and, and develop them. He was certainly extremely happy when we won the national title in 2001 because uh, we had been to four Frozen Fours. That was the fourth one we had been to in a row. And we couldn't win the big one. And you know the way North Dakota came back and tied the game late after we had a 2-0 lead. When we scored that goal in overtime, you can really see the raw excitement and happiness in him. Uh, the jump on the bench. Uh, his exuberance and his enthusiasm, his smile was just so enormous. I have a, a big giant blown up picture of our team picture, um, you know, when we won in Albany. And you take a look at the picture, and Coach is in the back row, and he's barely, he's just sticking his head over somebody, and if you know him, that's just how he is. It's, he wanted it to be about the players, and, it, and really, he'll tell you it's always about the players. Um, and, you know, I think if you ask the players, we all say it's really because of Coach York and his staff. We were playing up in, up in Maine in 2008, and we were hovering just about 500, and uh, we, we lost two games up there, and Jerry got in the locker room afterwards, and he said, hey, fellas, I love my team. You're a good team. Uh, the national championship is in Denver. Denver is a beautiful place in the spring. I'm going, and I'm gonna have a good time but I'll have a lot better time if you guys join me. And ended up winning a national championship. My sophomore year in Detroit, um, you know, I think my class, uh, we were sophomores and we felt like we let the team down, the program down a little bit as freshmen because uh, we didn't make the tournament. So I think sophomore year, uh, it was incredible to go to Detroit, play in Ford Field in front of 45,000 people. And, um, you know, we had two great performances against Miami and then against Wisconsin. But to get this national championship trophy was really sweet. All right, all right. Good. Just try to open up a little early. You know, instead of skating, turn like your shoulder check and pick off that pass. Okay. The build-up to win 925 and Jerry becoming the winningest hockey coach of, of all time. Um, 
From Jerry's perspective, it was easy because there was none. No one addressed it with him, no one talked about it. Doc Rivers sent him an email and said, Jerry, anytime you can be all time anything, that's really cool. And that put it in perspective for me a little bit. However, and you can ask Greg and, and Jim Logue, those of us who are around him every day, he's just Jerry to us. The 925 wins that, that Jerry has, I mean, that equates to John Wooden, Bear Bryant, those kind of numbers. And when he gets done and he has a, a thousand wins, that's 50 years of, of 20 wins a year, which is an amazing feat. Well, it's, it's unthinkable <laughs> for the normal person. Uh, it shows you how unnormal Jerry really is. Another person that's been around for all 925 of my father's wins is my mother. And, and I think they've been just an outstanding team together. Uh, and some people say the reason my father's so calm on the bench is my mother's yelling at the refs for him, you know, four rows back. But um, that, that, that's something that, you know, I think he would be the first to point out as well that, you know, one of the reasons he's been so successful um, is he's had someone like my mother behind him. I think a lot of the guys go through thinking that they're, he's using life to teach them about hockey, but I think really it's, he's using hockey to teach them about life. One of the things that keeps him young is his positive attitude on life, um, but also being around the kids, being at Boston College. He loves what he does, loves being around the team, you know, being in the weight room with them, uh, you know, doing the thing, skating every day. When he's on a national stage and when he's at the local Dunkin' Donuts, there's no difference in Jerry's personality. He does not see the limelight. It's part of his daily living. It's just part of that whole uh, value fabric that, that he buys into is that it's um, God, family, Boston College. Those three things are interchangeable in a sense. Each of them d demands of him a complete commitment and dedication. And he gives it to, to the Lord he gives it to his family, and he certainly gives it to the university. I think that's what makes him remarkable. He has done so much for the school at the same time that the school has been his greatest satisfaction in being where he is. You know, he, he, uh, he enjoys immensely doing what he's doing at Boston College, and there's no one who could be doing it better. <laughs>